what's up you guys so i got a question asked about like what is the workflow slash like um flexibility of a pa depending on your pay time off and the hours work and so if you are interested in that this video is for you because that answer is varied but i will tell you what it is from my experience okay so let's get into the video right now What's up, you guys? It's Zidana. Welcome back to my channel. So my voice is a little shot because I was yelling at um, Ant's basketball game last night. So bear with me. <laughs> but that's neither here nor there. You are here to know what the work-life balance, like workflow is like in terms of pay time off. Now, obviously, like this is varied. Now, it can vary because you of the specialty that you work in or the setting that you work in. If you work in an outpatient setting, if you are in urgent care or like a private office, or if you're in the hospital and inpatient, that that whole like PTO time off, like exactly like how much time you're getting off and how you can take it is very, very different. And I mean, again, it can even be more different in the number of hours or number of days you get off if you negotiate it that way, right? So if you work as like, you know, in an outpatient office, like, and maybe there are a few providers that also work with you, your time off may be, you know, I don't know, three weeks. Maybe you get three weeks of time off as opposed to two weeks of time off. Um, and then again, like if you're working shift work, it might be different. If you're not in the office like every day of the week, your time off and how you can schedule that can be different. So let me give you an example. So for me, I work in the hospital. I work 24 hour shifts. Um, there are people that work in my hospital as PAs that work 12 hour shifts and there are people that work eight hour shifts. Now, obviously like our time offs are gonna be different. Somebody can be off for like a whole week and then they still have like another two weeks off depending on how many hours they have accrued. So how my hospital system works is you accrue hours, right? So, and I, I mean, obviously I think like lots of hospital systems work that way as well, but the, each, each year tier um, is different. So I think like after three years, you're bumped up to a different amount of hours in terms of what you can accrue. And then after five years, um, you're bumped up to even a different number or maybe it's seven, but like there's like tiers that you get bumped up to. So right now I can accrue 320 hours of PTO. Now that 320 hours or 324 hours um, gets capped and like we can't roll it over anymore. So if you, you, if you don't use it, like you lose it, right? Because every pay period I'm accruing 8.3 hours of PTO time. However, because I work 24 hour shifts, there are times when I can literally take a whole month off and maybe just take like 72 hours of PTO. And so I'm gonna explain how that works for you because people are like, what? You could take a month off and you're only taking 72 out of your 300 hours. And it's like, yes. And then I come back and I work like a couple months and that time is like built back up like so quickly. So um, with my 24 hour shifts, we are only obligated 324s in a 14 day period. Um, but depending on how I schedule that, I don't even have to take PTO to get a full week off of of work right like literally I can get like 10 days off of work now if we throw in recovery days um, let's say a one day after you've worked a 24 that's your recovery day if I throw that in then obviously I'll take away a day or two so let's even say instead of 10 I get eight full days off but that is a full week off without taking PTO and I'm gonna show you how because if I work like a back-to-back -back, so a Sunday and a Tuesday 24-hour shift I'm off Wednesday Thursday Friday Saturday I don't have to work until the following Saturday because the pay period starts on the Sunday so I work Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then that whole week Sunday I'm off. And then like if I were to work, um, if I were to work on like Sabbath, so on like Sunset Friday to Sunset Saturday, then I would have come back on a Saturday and that would be literally you have like nine days off without taking PTO, okay? Now, if you insert PTO into this, like you can front load and back load your shifts. So if I want to like front load my shifts and I work a back to back to back, so 
I work a Sunday, a Tuesday, and a Thursday. I don't have to come, there are times when I don't necessarily have to come back until like, let's say the following Thursday, because you're working one 24 hour shift on one week, and then you're working the other two 24 hour shifts on the second week of your PTO of your um, regular work schedule. Now, if I literally want to take a vacation, I want to go somewhere for a month, which I do at times in like the summer when I want to travel like back home to Trinidad or, you know, we're going on our little family vacations, like whatever it may be. Like I simply need to either like front load, like I said, so I can front load that time. Then I'll have that entire week off or I can not front load at all. So like literally like I can do like a two 24 hour shift on one week. I can do my last 24 on the, fo the following week and then schedule out my PTO. So I can literally take three PTO shifts, which is 72 hours, but it'll really have to be like a little bit more than that. You take like your 80 hours of PTO time and then you insert it into how you want your work week to work so that I'm able to get like more bang for my buck. Um, I think that 324 kind of works out to be like two weeks of PTO, like when ish, like when you put it into 24 hours, like it's more than that, obviously, but um, it's like two weeks of PTO. But really, if you're looking at like an eight hour work week for like you know, so what the average person may do, like that's a lot of time, like 80 hours is a lot of time. That's right, you know, like 10 days. So it all depends on like how you do your PTO. Like my 80 hours doesn't look like other people's 80 hours. So those like 10 days really like stretches out to be 20, 21 days where I'm taking like three weeks or four weeks and I can take as much or as little as I want depending on how many hours I've accrued. So that's it. Um, and with the flexibility, again, like I said, there are people that have 12 hour shifts, eight hour shifts. There are people that have 10 hour shifts. Um, and then there are people like me who have 24 hour shifts and all of those various different shifts gives you differing levels of flexibility. So it really just depends on you and what you're looking for. Um, and this is not the only job that you know offers this kind of flexibility but um, because I'm in it I definitely think it's the best one <laughs> all right so if you have any other questions for me please go ahead and leave them in the comment section below don't forget to like and subscribe follow me on Instagram at Adama PA thank you guys so much for watching I will talk to you guys next time bye